Hi guys. Today's video is going to be a little bit about paint and different brands and what my preferences are. Now, I'm not sponsored by anybody. So simply, this is just my opinion and I'm gonna share it with you today. So here we go. It's true, I have lots of paints. I have lots of paint brands. I'm sure you'll recognize some of your favorites in there. But it's interesting. I have a lot of different paint brands and, and very specifically, certain brands colors are my favorite. For example, I like Winsor Newton's uh, Burnt Sienna. I love their Burnt Sienna over any other Burnt Sienna I've tried. I have, you know, I have my favorites. Now, of course, I have my paints are basically divided up in different colors. Now here's my flesh tones and grays and yellows and oranges and so on. I, I, I have drawers and drawers and drawers and drawers of paint. You see a lot of ones are open. You see a lot of everything. Um, obviously earth tones and browns and so on. I got lots of colors. I even have a paint annex. <laughs> this is my travel case. And in it, I, even though it's, it's lays open here and I, and I still go into it, but I'll have a lot of my smaller tubes of paint. And again, you'll see brands of every which kind in here. I mean, I've got, I've got favorites of different types of paints. Um, so, but then, so how do I know which color or which paint brand I'm going to use for a certain color? Like a lot of folks, that paint, we have our favorites. We all have our favorite brands. Now, you might say, really? But what's the difference between Michael Harding and Richardson's King Blue? There's, there is some differences and we're gonna talk about it. I'm gonna show you what, uh, you know, we're gonna mix it up a, a little bit on a little canvas and let you see the difference. I also, you know, you can say, okay, what, what about Gamblin and Windsor Newton's French Ultramarine or, Richardson's uh, Daxazine Violet and um, Windsor Newton's. I have a lot of different brands and I will say that some colors I prefer in one brand that I do in another. I won't say that I have any one preference over a certain brand per se as a whole, but I might say, you know, like there is no substitute for me for Windsor Newton's Burnt Sienna. I, I like their Burnt Sienna. I, I find other brands perhaps maybe a little chalky or less pigmenty, um, but yeah, I have my preferences. Just like I love Michael Harding's King's Blue. I love the King's Blue Deep. I use his that paint all the time, but then I'll swap it up every now and then and let, use the Richardson's King Blue if I'm not using the Deep. Um, so there's, there's a little bit of a difference and we're gonna talk about that today. So let's let's kind of see what we can do on a canvas. <laughs> okay. Now, here I've got Windsor Newton's Yellow Ochre. I'm just gonna put a little bit dab up here. Just a dab. I have uh, Georgian, Stellar and Rowney, Yellow Ochre. Gonna put a little dab up here. <laughs> Colors look pretty close. That's my guard dog. You got to meet Phoebe not too long ago, I think. And I'm gonna put a little bit. Now this is this is Michael Harding's uh, French yellow ochre. Okay. So he's got several different yellow ochres, but there we go. It's a little bit more richly pigmented, or it's just a little bit darker, I suppose. And so initially, just to see the paints out. Of course, um, the um, Georgian looks a little bit more, do I, oh, you can't even see it. Okay, so this is Windsor Newton, Georgian, and Michael Harding, okay? Now, this is, this looks a little bit um, more oily, like there's more oil, less of the actual paint in, in it, the pigment. This is probably what I'm more used to. This is Windsor Newton's. Um, Georgian, and this is Michael Harding's. Michael Harding's always very richly pigmented paint. Now let's see, I just, I just squirted out a little bit of ivory black and titanium white. 
okay? So let's make some tints and shades of each one. We'll try to use equal amounts of paint and just give you an idea of how these, how these babies work. So I'm gonna take a little bit, oops, of the uh, titanium white here. Just put a little bit there. I'm gonna try to take this, about the same amount of paint on each one. Okay, well, let's give a little bit more here. Okay, now if I take a little bit of Winsor Newtons, let's take about the same amount and mix it in here. We're gonna go ahead and mix a tint here. I will say that the paint that I'm using, the white titanium that I'm using here, um, the titanium white is Winsor Newtons, white titanium. Okay. And there we go. That is a pretty nice little tint of yellow ochre. Let's go ahead and try, and this is Winsor Newton. Now this is Dallin Raleigh's uh, Georgian. Let's try that. Now for some reason, it's a little bit different. Okay, but it's still, that's a pretty nice little tint. Now, this is the interesting thing because this is so pigmented. Um, let's try to take the same amount. And you're gonna notice that it's going to, well, it's behaving pretty nicely there. Um, I'm gonna grab a little bit more. That's Michael Harding's. Now, again, I keep going back to the fact that this is his French yellow ochre. So it's a little more must, like more mustard color or like brown mustard color, not as yellowy. Interesting enough, you can see when you look at the, the colors up on the top, the straight tubes, it's different because the, now the tints look a lot different. This is a more, more creamy yellow. This is a little bit, mm, it's, they're all slightly different. This has a browner cast, but again, this is his French mill. I mean, his French yellow ochre. Let's try that same idea. Um, now let's go ahead and do um, a shade. And you can see that they all behave a little bit differently, right? Um, hopefully you're able to see the difference. And I'll, I'll get closer here at the end so you can really, really take it in. Let me see if I just move it in a little bit more. Um, so if you're really looking at these colors, you're able to see that Try to move this without loosen that up just a little bit. So you can see that this is a little bit yellower. This has got a little bit more of a, a browner color to it. And then this is much browner. Um, that is the tints. Now that's just adding white paint. So you can see that they all behave a little differently. There we go. So now let's try a shade. So we're gonna take the same idea. We're gonna we're gonna come down here, pop a little color here. That's Windsor Newtons, Georgians, and Michael Harding's. Okay. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of, of ivory black to it. And we're gonna mix this in. Now I probably didn't use enough. Let's try to add a little bit more. Yeah. My bad. I know, Phoebe. People just keep walking by your studio like, you know. That's my guard dog. Nobody's gonna mess with my nobody's gonna mess with me as long as that dog's on. I'm gonna take a little bit less. There you go. That's a little bit more like what I'm looking for. And you can see that this almost has a little bit of a greener cast to it, right? This is what I'm saying, that sometimes out of the tube, a color may appear one way, but when you start mixing it with other colors, you're, you're, you're going to, um, you may get a different response from the same color depending on the brand. Put a little bit more of that in there. Okay, so we're gonna talk about that here in a minute. Um, let's grab a little bit of this again. Let's put a little bit more in there. So I have it equal amounts of each. 
Now I am using ivory black. Okay. So let's look at those shades a little bit closer. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that the color is translating. This is probably what I, uh, actually I like, I like Michael Harding's shade better. Um, this has, this, the Georgian has a little bit more of a greener tint, something I wouldn't have expected. This is a little bit more truer to what I'm used to, but let me add a little bit more of the uh, actual pigment to it of the Windsor Newton's Yellow Ochre. And see if I, what happens if I add a little bit more here. And you know, it's actually getting a little bit closer about, they're about equal. I, I was not giving it a fair shake here. Um, and now this is, I'm just putting a little bit more. You can see that these colors are very similar. Um, they do turn, they do have a little bit of a green cast to them. Um, even though I am using, oh, I told you wrong. It's lamp black. That's no wonder that explains it. Um, but I thought I was using ivory black and I wasn't, and I would have gotten a completely different color. I th grabbed the, <laughs> the, the tube of paint that I thought was uh, um, ivory black, but it's lamp black. But so you can see, these are the two colors that I get. And then this, they're all vastly different. This, the Michael Harding is closer to the Georgian, but it's got a grayer, a grayer cast to it. This is probably more like the shade I would have expected so I just want to, and I guess this whole illustration here is not because I'm picking one color over another per se, or a one brand of paint over another. It's just showing that they may act completely different. Just because it is yellow ochre does not mean that per brand of paint that you're going to get the same result. Let's try another example of some colors. I'm going to leave this palette this just like it is. We're just going to move to the side. Okay, let's try uh, Richardson's uh, Dioxazine Violet. This may be a little bit different. Yeah, I hear birds too, don't you? Let me see here. To Windsor Newtons, okay. Whoopsie. Didn't even get some on there, okay. So there we have those paints. And my palette knife. Okay, clean my palette knife off. I'm going to just smear a little white into one. This, see there's a tint right there. Windsor Newtons. And a little bit okay now there's a difference here a little bit of a difference this is a little bit more blue in it perhaps I'm gonna put a little bit more and see what happens here so if you can see one has, it seems to be a little bit bluer. I think this looks a little bluer. This looks a little pinker. Um, but I'm going to move, move a little bit more. So there you have it. That's, can you see the difference? And that just goes to show that sometimes within a brand, you may actually um, see a very distinct difference. Now, but I, but some brands, uh, not so much. Now, I, I, <laughs> I, I know I said earlier that there was a brand of paint that um, I only like um, Windsor Newton's um, Burnt Sienna. I've tried several others. I don't even have any others here at the studio for me to compare them to. Uh, the reason that I do have some experience with it is when my, my uh, students bring in another color. 
And I'm like, oh no, I don't know. You know, this is not what I'm used to. This is not the burnt sienna that I want. So yeah, then there's that. So hang on for just a minute. We're gonna try another color. Okay, now let's just try, let's just look at um, Michael Harding's um, King's Blue. With, I'm gonna compare it to um, Richardson's King's Blue. Okay. Lot that's very different. It's a li yeah, that's a little bit different. Now I'm gonna clean off my little palette knife. Michael's is definitely a little bit more Richardly pigmented. Let's see what happens when we do a tint. And I need more white paint. So let's go ahead and put a little bit more down. I'm gonna put that up here. If you don't need to see that. Okay. So we're gonna grab a little bit of white and mix that in. See how that, now you can see that still stays, even with the white in it. Look how richly pigmented it, it this tint is. That's a, and I used quite a bit of white. Now let's do the same thing with Richardson's, Richardson's paint. Now, They're both very, they're close. I, I will say that um, Michael Harding's may be a little less, uh, there may be a more chalky cast to this one. I don't know, it, it, it's, it's not that drastically different, but I will say this, the price of paint is also something that influences my decision on what I'm buying and the, the Richardson's paint is a lot less expensive than Michael Harding's. Now, that's not to say you do get what you pay for. Michael's paints are amazing. I love his paints, but unfortunately, my budget doesn't allow me to have my whole boxes full of his paints only. I wish it did, um, but right now, it's that's not the case. So I'll oftentimes find like, a, because I love his paint so much that if I can find a color, because he's got a lot of different colors that I can't get anyplace else. And um, if I have, if there is a brand that makes something that's similar to one of Michael Harding's paints, then I'll try it, especially if it's a lot less expensive, to see how it works. Uh, I guarantee that I'm always wanting to go back to Michael Harding's paints. Um, but I haven't found one I don't like. But um, as far as the cost, obviously Richardson's a lot less expensive. Um, the difference here is so, um, it's not as, um, it doesn't really stand out that much enough to warrant me always buying one paint over another. If I had to do a very large piece and I had to have a lot of King's Blue, I may be mixing a lot of um, Richardson into the mix there. Let's just see what this looks like as a, um, um, let's compare these two as shades. I'm taking a little bit of black and I'm not gonna, I'm trying to do a little less black. Oops, a little bit more than that. All right, let's see what happens here. Let's drop this down a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. And we're gonna come down here and do that. So I'm looking at this and it, this is a, that's very, um, kind of looks like a denim color. Nice, almost in, not really an indigo, but almost like denim. That's a nice shade. Let's go see what happens when we do, how this one behaves. Richardson, uh, Richardson's against, as far as a, a shade. I need a little bit more. Not too different. Actually, they look very similar. Um, I guess the, you know, as far as mixing, if I was actually just going to take my brush and see how it feels. Of course, painting is a feeling too. So, of course, here's Michael's, and I've got a little bit of my yellow ochre still on my brush, but here's, you know, if, I, if I'm doing this versus this, there's a little, this one doesn't move quite as nicely um, Michael's moves, the paint actually moves a little bit better. Um, I'm adding a little bit of oil just to see what the difference is. 
this Michael Harding's paint is actually moving a little bit better for me. Um, and let's see here if I can show you. Um, it just, it just versus, you know, I'm seeing, um, I'm getting better coverage with Michael's paint. Yeah. But it's, it's still, I have to say, Richardson's still pretty good. Um, yeah, so there's a little bit of a difference, but not so much. Let's try another color. Okay, so here's a wild card. This was a brand of paint that I picked up in a art store in Vancouver, British Columbia. It's a brand I'd never heard of. Now, just because I haven't heard of it doesn't mean it didn't, it's not a very well-known brand. It's just one I wasn't familiar with, and it was Opus. Um, Opus Essential Oil Colors, um, this is their Cadmium Green. So let's compare it to Gamblin's ca uh, Cadmium Green, okay? So we're gonna squirt out a little bit. Um, this, you know, cadmiums are one of those colors that oftentimes are very, very expensive just because of everything that goes along with um, the paint itself and the manufacturing because it's not considered a, a healthy paint. There's a lot of um, environmental guidelines that have, that occur because of those paints. Now, as you can see, that Opus is running all over the place. Now, doesn't mean it's a bad paint, just means the oil somehow separated. And if, as you saw earlier, how I store paints, it's no wonder. But let's just, it's a little bit, uh, has a chalky, wet consistency. I'm not crazy about that. Now here's Gamblin's. And you can see it's obviously, to me, I would say this is a much better paint. Um, I was doing a demo and Vancouver and I guess I needed a paint and I just went to a store and got this paint. Um, and my, you can see it's very wet. It doesn't cover very well. Let's look at what happens if I add some titanium white. Of course, titanium white always, um, adds to the opacity of any color and of course any cadmium is usually very opaque anyway so it's usually not necessary but so i'm getting a little purple in there yikes 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 but i'm here to tell you this is this paint is not behaving very nicely for me i'm not digging it at all um i had it i probably needed it and used it and it was fine for that but i obviously am not going to be running out getting more opus paints now this is more like what I expect. This is Gamblin's Cadmium Green. You can see that it's it just, I don't know, it just, it looks better. I'm gonna try something here. Let's try, let me clean my brush off real well. Um, let's see how it feels here. This, is, this has a chalky, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that this is not very well milled or probably doesn't have a lot of pigment in it. As far as its coverage, that's that's what I'm getting there. Let's look at Gamblin's. Oopsie, it's moving a little bit for me. Oops. That's because it's gripping. It's a lot thicker paint. It's gripping pretty well. Oh, yeah. This is moving and, and behaving like I would expect it to. So I would tell you that if I was going to make a color selection here, you can see that they even look different. This has got a lot more pigment to it than this does. Um, so if I was going to say, and I, I guess if you're looking here, that not all paints are created equal, um, this is a very good example of quality. Now, the other examples I was showing you, it's not so much quality, it's more of a preference thing, but um, I am a, I usually like sticking with paint colors that I know or paint brands that I know. Um, and I probably didn't have a choice at this store <laughs> that I was in, in uh, and ended up with this Opus paint. It's just a little bit off. You can see the difference in the color. They're both cadmium green. Um, and if I was to guess, let's see what it says on the back. And since my eyesight, even with glasses, is not 
Supreme here, Series 3, Light Fastness. Okay, it's linseed oil. The pigment is concentrated cadmium sulfide, um, hydrated chromium oxide. Okay, and let's see what that that's what it's calling. That's what the Opus paint is. And I'm really trying to read this for you. Okay, of course, the cadmium zinc sulfide is the color. So there's even a different pigment. Both have their warnings on the back. Actually, interesting enough, if you're looking at the backs of these tubes, you see how there's a whole lot more about uh, the warnings. There's really not a lot of warnings on this one. Um, that's kind of interesting to me uh, because, you know, we have to have, you know, all these warnings on their paints. So if you look, you can see that there's all the warnings on this cadmium tube and this one doesn't have any. Ooh, interesting. Although it does say that it is cadmium. So yeah, I don't know. It's probably not as much cadmium and you can see that there is a difference here. So I know this is about as exciting as watching paint dry for some. So we're going to back it off here. Um, but that I would just definitely say that I do have my favorites and we're going to talk about that here in a minute. So that's it in a nutshell. My colors are selected based on the color, not necessarily by the brand, because even within any one brand, one color may perform differently across the board compared to you know, one yellow ochre and one brand doesn't perform the same way as another yellow ochre in a different brand. Doesn't mean the quality of the paint's not there, it just means it's different. And that's why through just a lot of experience, you come up with finding up out what your favorites are. And I'm sure you do have favorites. I'd love to hear about them. If there's something that you want to see me cover, let me know. Um, I'd be glad to do it. Uh, I'm also always looking for, you know, any kind of new idea that you'd like to see covered here. Uh, again, thanks for joining me today. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave them, leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you're a subscriber, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and ring the bell. That way you'll know when the next video comes out. So until then, I'll see ya. Bye.